Hi, I'm Christine Hernandez, Livestock Specialist here at Heifer Ranch for Heifer USA. And I'm Sam Noble here at Heifer Ranch for Heifer USA, and I'm the Poultry Production Specialist. Today, we're moving our three-week-old chickens from our brooder to pasture. Out on pasture, they'll live in prairie schooners, which are larger versions of chicken tractors, for the rest of their time at the ranch. Join us as Christine, Sam, and other members of the livestock team showcase every step of the brooder to pasture transition, including schooner setup, catching and crating birds, and more. Watch until the end of this video to see how we integrate livestock guardian dogs into our pastured poultry production. Let's get moving. So when the chicks first arrive, they start out in our brooder at a high temperature, about 92 degrees. And then to get them ready to go to pasture, we will decrease that temperature within the brooder, usually about a degree each day until they reach the temperature that they'll be in, in the environment. Between two and a half and three weeks in the brooder, it's time to take the birds out to pasture. This is our first move of the year since it's starting to warm up to suitable temperatures for raising poultry on pasture. The weather at our ranch here in Perryville, Arkansas is mild to warm right now, about 75 degrees during the day this month, meaning that the transition from the heated brooder to the warm, sunny pastures should be an easy one for the chicks. We don't want to start pastured poultry production too early and risk moving the chicks onto pasture in weather that's too cold or too harsh. We get our first batch of chicks in March and continue getting new chicks throughout the summer months. This year we will be raising nine batches of 3,200 chickens and we raise pastured poultry. And so for that, all the chickens and the turkeys have to spend majority of their life out on pasture. We put them on beautiful fresh grass we let them spend the whole next day in that same area. And then following that, we will move that schooner to fresh ground every single morning. When we choose which pastures to raise our poultry on, we consider a few different factors. First, we narrow our options down to the pastures that have water access, so we can hook up an automatic watering system in each schooner. Keep watching this video to learn more about the watering system we use. Second, we consider the seasonal climate. Here in Arkansas, our wet seasons are in spring and fall. In those months, we choose pastures at higher elevations than in the dry season to prevent any potential danger from flooding or excess water in the pastures. Third, we determine which pastures need the most rehabilitation through fertilization. Because chicken manure adds nitrogen to the soil, it's a useful tool for healing and improving the soil in our pastures. Just one pass of chickens makes a major difference encouraging greener, more lush growth where the schooner has been. Just one batch of pastured poultry allows us to rehabilitate between three and four acres of pasture. With our pastures selected and chicks acclimated to the outside weather, it's time to move the birds out to pasture. First, we create catch pens using large poultry crates. These pens allow us to create smaller groupings of chicks and contain them in smaller areas. We herd the chicks into smaller sections of the brooder in a few ways. First, two or three livestock team members walk from one end of the brooder to push the chicks toward the catch pen area. We shake plastic, like trash bags or grocery sacks, to mimic the approach of a predator, causing the chickens to run away from the bags and toward the catch pen area. As the chicks file into the catch pen, we close the entrance behind them with additional boxes. If any chicks weren't herded into the pen or got out of the pen, catching them individually is usually the quickest way to return them to the flock. To catch a chick, simply pick it up with both hands around its wings and body. When catching a chick in a larger space, approaching the chick from behind is often more successful. Once we've caught a chick, we place it in one of these game bird crates from 3T Products. At this age, 10 birds fit in each crate. Here at Heifer USA, we use crates with two flap doors, which speeds up the process of catching and releasing chicks, but other door styles are available. To place a chick inside the game bird crate, we simply lift the flap and push the bird inside. The flap will then fall back down, keeping the crated birds contained until we release them on pasture. As you can see, our livestock team catches and crates chicks pretty quickly. When you've got over 3,000 chicks to move, you get plenty of practice. When all the crates are filled, we stack them in our chicken trailer, making sure that each crate locks into place with the one below it. 
That ensures that no boxes will fall off the trailer during transport. With 56 crates holding 10 chicks each, we're putting 560 chickens in each schooner. So this is one of the newer design schooners that we'll be using for our pastured poultry this year. This design was fabricated by the Yoder family up in Missouri. It is 20 feet by 48 feet. And as you can see, the inside of it doesn't have those metal crossbars like our other poultry schooners have. So we are using the Cool brand feeders for our poultry this year. Uh, these hold 35 pounds of feed and then we just have them attached to the, the purlins of this schooner with some rope. And then there is a cable adjuster so that we can adjust the height of the feeder as the chickens grow out on pasture so that the feeder can always be at their proper height, which is at their shoulders. And that's where their back and their neck meet together. We use a homemade water system here at Heifer Ranch. Uh, we just use half inch PVC, some old garden hoses, and then we use game bird water bowls. Um, these are also on chains and S hooks so that we can adjust the height of that as the chickens grow as well. We top off the feeders every morning, and our automatic water line keeps the chicks hydrated and healthy during their time on pasture. Once we get all 56 crates to the pasture, we begin unloading the chicks, crate by crate, into the schooner. So to unload them, we just kind of gently tip them back and open up the door, and then slowly lower it to the ground so that the chickens can kind of fall out and then they can go up and do their thing. It does not hurt them at all. They are perfectly fine. After the big move, we leave the schooner in place for a full day to let the chicks get settled. Then we move the schooner every morning to provide the chickens with fresh pasture and to spread their manure evenly. So a few years ago, we were having heavy predator issues and it got to the point where our live animal traps and then relocating those predators were just not working anymore. So we made the decision to go ahead and purchase some livestock guardian dogs to specifically be with our pastured poultry. It's really the, the dogs barking and then the dogs scent and just their presence out here that helps to turn the predators. We got all four of our poultry guardian dogs as weaned puppies. So they were about three months old and we got them from a guardian dog trainer out in Virginia. And so they had working parents, which is very important if you're looking to purchase a young livestock guardian dog. We have six schooners for our pastured poultry and we want to get the most out of the manure that they're leaving on the soil. And so we raise those in two different locations on the farm, and then we'll be moving those to different pastures throughout our season. And so we have two different groups of livestock guardian dogs that stay with each group of schooners. Here we have Ross and Firewood, and then we also have Pat and Cheryl. The pasture setup that we have for the guardian dogs with our poultry is they have a old chicken schooner. That's what we used to raise our broiler chickens in a number of years ago. So we're repurposing that. So it's just a PVC structure with a tarp on top. Um, they get hay in there. They get their food and their water in there as well. And then they also have a large outdoor area. So we use two reels of electric netting and then T-posts to make sure that it's tight. And then we also have a solar charger on there. So we have this netting set up close to our poultry schooners. And as we move our poultry schooners forward every day, uh, they'll be moving closer and closer to the dogs. And then um, about once a week, we will pick up the dog enclosure and we will move it to a fresh area as well. So that they stay really close to the schooners as they move. We have that set up so that the dogs stay with each group of schooners. Uh, if we didn't keep them within this netting, they would wander around the whole ranch and they would want to be with each other all the time. And then our poultry wouldn't get the protection that they need, especially um, at nighttime where the predators are most prevalent.
Now that this batch of chicks is settled on pasture, it's time to flip the brooder, preparing it for the next delivery of chicks to start the process over. To learn more about how we prepare our brooder for chicks, check out our video, Chicken Brooder for 30,000 Chicks. And to see the whole process of raising chickens from start to finish, check out our other video, Raising 20,000 Chickens on Pasture. Thanks for following along on our first chick move of the year. Stay tuned for more farmer training videos as we raise this year's pastured poultry. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified every time we publish a new video.